Hello, my name is Morshid Mannan. I am a Max Weber Fellow at the Robert Schumann Center for Advanced Studies. Today I'll be speaking to you about how the rule of law interacts with blockchain-based systems and in some cases is challenged by blockchain-based systems through a move towards the rule of code. The topic that I will be speaking to you about today, the rule of code, is a topic that I'm currently researching with two other collaborators at the Robert Schumann Center, Primavera de Filippi and Vessel Ryers. It is an opportune moment to speak about this topic as the regulation of digital assets is a topic that the European Union is currently actively engaged in. It is currently in the process of formulating rules on a framework for crypto assets, including a licensing regime for crypto asset service providers, such as crypto exchanges, and applying global anti-money laundering rules and standards to the transfer of crypto assets. First, to understand the ongoing interplay between the rule of law and the rule of code, we must go back a couple of decades when a similar discussion was unfolding with respect to the then new domain of cyberspace. In the 1990s, many claims that are now being made about blockchain technology were then made about the internet. Amidst declarations of the independence of cyberspace, legal scholars like David Post wrote about the unregulability of the internet. And Ludlow commented that the state lacked legitimacy to regulate cyberspace. Famously, the late Joel Reidenberg claimed that the use of code to regulate online behavior marked the advent of a new area of law, the Lex Informatica. These claims proved to be overly ambitious. There are recognized pressure points that can be controlled on the internet, for example, ISPs. And nowadays, access to the internet is mediated by large online operators to whom law and regulation can be applied. In view of this, what is so different about blockchain-based systems and the so-called Lex Cryptographica, a term that was coined by Primavera de Filippi and Aaron Wright? To explain this, I need to briefly delve into some of the technical properties of blockchain networks. Simply put, a public permissionless blockchain is a decentralized database or public ledger that is replicated on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network and that operates without any centralized authority. In its ideal form, it has certain distinguishing features. As unilateral modification of the network is automatically detected by nodes, information recorded on the blockchain is tamper resistant. As the protocol and consensus algorithms are publicly available, blockchain transactions are transparent. As till now, only a public and private key pair is needed for an address, joining a blockchain network is pseudonymous. As a copy of the blockchain network is available on uh, every node, it is hard to shut down the network altogether and can be replicated from scratch from any single node. Moreover, as rules of a blockchain protocol need active participation of nodes to be changed, exercising power and coercion is difficult. So what do these distinguishing features mean for regulating blockchain technology? Autonomous software, in some respects, appear to be beyond the remit of any jurisdiction. There are, however, pressure points for state regulation, such as crypto asset service providers. Yet the pseudonymity of users, such as wallet holders, make it difficult for regulators and courts to identify people to sanction. This particular issue arose recently, for instance, in the Singapore High Court decision in CLM and CLN and others of 2022. Even if targets are identified, the enforcement of sanctions is difficult. The tamper resistance of the protocol means that legislation and court orders on their own cannot roll back transactions. The difficulty in coercing network participants means that even the forfeiture or seizure of private keys or the freezing of assets will only allow the control of specific assets and not control of the overall network. 
Autonomy also means that the interface provider or exchange can be shut down, but the network will continue to operate and can be accessed through other new interfaces. In short, it is not possible to regulate a particular entity as a proxy to regulating the operations of the overall network. This can lead to a conflict between the rule of law and the rule of code in these networks. So what do these terms mean? Broadly speaking, as many of us know, the rule of law refers to a concept where all persons and institutions are accountable to the law. The law is equally applied and independently adjudicated. In most definitions, the rule of law entails adherence to certain principles, such as the supremacy of law, the separation of powers, the avoidance of arbitrariness, transparency and participation in decision making in political systems. There are also thicker conceptions of the rule of law that include uh, concepts from within human rights. The rule of law is contrasted by the rule by law, and this refers simply to the instrumentalization of law as a tool of political power where the sovereign can effectively rise above the law. The rule of code is a rough approximation of the rule of law. It is a polycentric rather than a monocentric system where all persons and institutions are accountable to the rules enshrined in the blockchain protocol or smart contract code. The code seeks to avoid arbitrariness and ensures equal applicability. For instance, anyone who tries to validate transactions that violate the underlying blockchain protocol will simply see that these transactions are rejected by the rest of the network. However, the rule of code raises questions of legitimacy and acting against the general interest. This ranges from practical substantive considerations such as um, money laundering and illicit transactions being recorded on the blockchain to more abstract but still important issues such as the compliance of smart contracts with principles of contract law. There have also been several instances where the rule of code has been violated, such as in the now infamous the DAO attack where a vulnerability of a so-called decentralized autonomous organization's code was exploited by an attacker so as to siphon away a large amount of crypto assets. In a sense, this brought the rule of code, which seeks to avoid arbitrariness, into conflict with inchoate norms of the DAO's community, such as respect for private property. Given concerns raised by the use of crypto assets and the rule of code more generally, how should the rule of law respond? From the legislative proposals published so far by the European Union, the approach seems to largely be to draw on a familiar regulatory toolkit for other players in the finance industry, such as the imposition of licensing requirements on crypto asset service providers and dis designing rules for attributing liability to certain key stakeholders within the blockchain space. For instance, we see this uh, being played out in the legislative process for the draft markets in crypto assets regulation. The problem as mentioned previously, is that there are a swathe of issues over which a crypto asset service provider does not have control over, such as a bug in a smart contract code, due to these distinguishing features of blockchain technology. This exposes them to significant liability risks, with the consequence of either raising the prices charged by crypto asset service providers or leading them to leave the EU market altogether. In some cases, these distinct features are used to insist on even more stringent rules than currently exist for mainstream financial institutions. The draft recast of the so-called transfer of funds regulation, for instance, proposes the introduction of requirements to collect party and transaction information, even for transactions of less than a thousand euros. Taken together, some have argued that this proposal or set of proposals has the potential of stifling financial innovation in the European Union. Innovatively, during the drafting process of the transfer of funds regulation recast, there have been suggested amendments that blockchain technology itself be used 
by regulators to monitor illicit transactions given its properties of transparency and tamper resistance. If a provision to this effect is implemented, then we can, in a sense, see the instrumentalization of the rule of code to serve objectives of the rule of law. In our research, we argue for the coexistence of the rule of law and the rule of code in a global pluralist polycentric system. For more on how the rule of law can be regulated via governance, please follow our research.